depending on which study that you use, a surprising 25% or more of all retirees are forced to unretire. I don't want to see that happen to you. I want your retirement to be great. And so in today's video, I'm going to share with you the five main spending mistakes that retirees make that force them to quit retirement. And the first one is going to surprise you. And that is small differences in your monthly spending can make a big, big difference as to whether or not you're at risk of running out of money. Let me give you an example. I've been a financial advisor now for over 20 years. And if somebody comes to me and says, hey, Asul, you know, we'd like to spend $5,000 a month in retirement. And let's say that we, we run the analysis and they have a 95% likelihood of never running out of money, which is wonderful. Surprisingly, if you increase that to $5,500 a month or more, I mean, just that 10% difference, that $500 a month difference, can make a big, big difference. It, it can change your likelihood of success from 95% to 80% or lower. And I don't want you to be surprised by that. So the first thing I think we, we all need to think about doing is test driving our expenses in retirement. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're spending in, in that example, let's say that the couple was uh, spending $7,000 a month and they said, oh yeah, we can, we can uh, live off of $5,000 a month. That's not a problem. Well, it's one thing to do that. And it, 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 I'm sorry, it's one thing to say that. It's another thing to do that. And so I really recommend at least three months, preferably longer, six to 12 months, to the, the best that you can, test driving out your retirement budget. And if it feels sacrificial, or if you find you can't keep on that budget, then you know, you, you just regroup and say, maybe I work a year or two longer, or you make the decision, what were the things that made it feel uncomfortable? Maybe it's that you weren't able to go out and eat as, as much as you wanted, or you weren't able to take that nicer vacation once or twice a year. And then you just ask yourself, is it worth that? And if it, and nobody can answer that for you, that's each of us answers that ourselves. And if it is worth it, then you think, okay, maybe I work an extra year or two so I can spend a little more money. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I don't want you to be surprised and, and find out, oh gee, you know what, we've got a problem. I also want to encourage you, A, to visit with a, a financial advisor because you don't want to think you have enough money when it comes to retire. I mean, that's okay when you're five years out, seven years out, three years out, but when it comes time to actually make the decision, now it's time to retire. You want that clarity, you want that confidence in your plan. And if you did use a financial advisor and you find that your expenses are creeping up more than what you expected, I want you to go back to your financial advisor and say, hey, you know, we're finding that our numbers are higher. Can you rerun the analysis for us? Just like if your health, you know, if you're seeing your doctor and, and your doctor, you know, measures your, your, your blood pressure and maybe you've got a blood pressure monitor at home and doc says, okay, your blood pressure is fine. Well, if you find your blood pressure starts creeping up at home, just like you'd see your doctor, I want you to do the same thing um, with your financial advisor on that. Because, you know, if, you're, if you overspend, you know, one month or two months out of the year, is it gonna move the needle? Probably not, I don't know. None of this is financial advice, but my gut tells me probably not. But if you find yourself regularly overspending what your budget was, it could lead to an issue. Okay, the second one is Roth conversions. And, and this is kind of the third rail for a financial advisor to talk about. Uh, you know, Roth conversions are just kind of a staple in, in retirement and uh, financial advising. For many, many people, it does make sense to do Roth conversions. However, it doesn't make sense for everybody, right? The goal is you want to pay the tax on that conversion from a regular IRA or a regular 401k. You want to pay that tax as you take it out at as low of a rate as possible. But here's my caution. It also is going to increase your with, you have to pay those taxes, right? So in the year that you withdraw the money. So if you do a Roth conversion, let's say you convert $100,000. Um, if, if you do that, 
that is money, you're gonna have to pay tax on that when you take the money out in that calendar year is when the, the um, it's gonna count as taxable income and then the following April or October if you file for extensions is when that's going to be due. But that's gonna increase your withdrawal rates. I mentioned earlier the 4% rule, taking 4% out of your account. Um, that might increase it and it could increase it substantially, maybe a 6%. And you might think, well, so, you know, what's the big deal if I take it out five years early? Eventually the government's gonna force me to start taking money out. Well, the issue is something called sequence of return risk, where we're at our, our, our most vulnerable to negative stock market returns in the early years of our retirement. And so we just want to be cautious that we don't put ourselves in a situation where we become a forced seller of stocks in a down market. And let's say you do the Roth conversion in January of, of one year, and now it's, it's you know, uh, July passes, December passes, it's the following April, and it's time to pay the tax uh, on that money. In fact, you, you might even have to pay it on a quarterly basis. Uh, none of this is financial advice, I should say. You do want to talk to a financial advisor or an accountant. But now the taxes are due, and what if the stock market's down? And that forces you to sell stocks at a lower price. Early, because the stock market's down. Early in our retirement is when we're most susceptible to that. So I just want you to be cautious and for you to be thinking about that as well. The other thing is, you know, if you can pay tax on money that you're withdrawing out of uh, your regular 401k or regular IRA, if you can pay that at the 10 or the 12% uh, level, you know, that's, that's a pretty affordable tax rate. Again, it's not tax advice, but there's less of an incentive. You know, we have seven tax brackets in the United States and it goes from 10% to 12%, and then it jumps to 22%. So if you can do, if you can take money out and just out of your regular uh, IRA, which many Americans can, and just pay 10 or 12% tax on, it makes the incentive to do a Roth conversion lower than what it would be if you're taking money out, certainly at 22, 24%. Uh, or, or something along those ranges. So think about sequence of return risk. Think about what tax bracket um, you're in. Here in the United States, married filing jointly, it's a little under $95,000 uh, that you can earn after the standard deduction of $29,000 uh, and still be taxed, married filing jointly in 2024 at the 12% federal tax level. So doing unnecessary Roth conversions can be a mistake. Okay, the next one is not thinking about taxes. You know, I just spent a fair amount of time talking about one tax element, which is on the Roth conversion. But for many retirees, when they come up with their budget, they're not thinking about what's, what's the taxes I'm gonna have to pay on this. And for many of us, you know, we have three different buckets that our money are in. You know, we have our regular IRA or regular 401k, which I call me a tax me later account because we only get taxed on it when we take money out. Then we have the um, tax me now, but tax me never again account, which is what I call the Roth versions of the IRA and the 401ks. We don't get the tax break now when we put the money in, right? But if we follow all the rules, it's never taxed at the federal level. That's why I call it a tax me now, but then don't tax me ever again on that account. And then there's the tax me as I go account, which is kind of money that we would have in our bank account or a traditional taxable account where, you know, if we receive interest uh, money on that account, we pay taxes each year as, as we go. So those are our three accounts. And depending on where you take the money out, can have a dramatic impact on the taxes that you end up owing. For instance, if you took all the money out of the Roth and you uh, complied with all the rules, you would pay no federal tax on that money, right? So depending on where the money comes from can have a big impact on taxes. So I encourage you to be involved and thoughtful and deliberate about which account you take money out of. And it should be part of your plan before you get into retirement, certainly in retirement, being strategic, 
for most people, it makes sense to hire an accountant or a financial advisor to help them with that. Okay, the next one that, that sneaks up on people, um, maybe they come up with their budget and they say, you know, this is what our rent is or this is what our mortgage payment is and, you know, this is how much we spend in gas and, and food every month. But maybe they forget about their annual expenses or they don't factor that in or one-time expenses, maybe taking the grandkids on a Disney cruise or if you've got several uh, adult children, you know, helping out if you're planning on helping out with their, their wedding expenses, things like that is either forgetting about the annual expenses or these one-time expenses that are really important. Another common example is a new car. You know, many people plan on getting a new car every three, four, five years. And is that budgeted in? Because if it's not, it can be, it can be a surprise for you. And then the last one is, is our healthcare cost. You know, if, if you're close to 65, you might be thinking, hey, Asul, I've got this covered. As soon as I get on Medicare, I'm okay. I've got COBRA uh, until Medicare and, and then Medicare kicks in. I just want to put on your radar screen that according to Fidelity, which is one of the, large, the United States' largest custodians, um, they issued a report that says the average 65-year-old individual can expect to pay over $150,000 in their lifetime in healthcare costs that are not going to be reimbursed, not going to be covered by Medicare. So that's a lot of money. And, you know, unfortunately, many of us are going to need long-term care uh, in addition to that. And that $157,000 that Fidelity reports does not include the cost of long-term care. Now, many of us are planning on, you know, one of our, you know, if you're married, one, you know, the first spouse that, that needs help, the other spouse is gonna help out, or maybe you have adult children that live nearby. So it doesn't have to be expensive, but if you don't have that, it can be expensive. So the last expense that can surprise people is healthcare expense. So those are, those are the top areas. I think another thing is you're thinking about retirement that would be helpful is, how does, how does your plan for retirement, your income, your distributions, the amount of money that you're planning on living off in retirement, how does that compare to other Americans? And that's why I made this video, the average income for retirees in the United States. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in that one. Bye bye.